Ladies and gentlemen, honored guests and fellow people who want to be successful, I'm here today to give you a lesson that can change the way you think, inspire you to be great, and lead you to a life full of plenty. You're now on a journey to learn more about yourself, gain power, and master your money. Before you do anything else, I want you to keep your mind and heart open to what's possible. Because of a scarcity mindset, limiting beliefs, and self-doubt, many of us have been stuck for too long. But today is a turning point, a time of awareness and freedom. I want you to let go of the chains of failure and think like a millionaire as we start this journey together. Not because of outside events or a lucky break, but because of a big change in how we think, believe, and act. As you can see, the way to wealth and success is not just for a few people. Anyone who dares to walk it can get there. To go down this road, you need to be brave, determined, and fully committed at all times. But most importantly, it's a road that starts inside us, in the halls of our minds, and in the depths of our souls. So let's start this trip with an open mind and an open heart. Let's question what is already true, go against the odds, and change the story of our lives. Right now, we're on the edge of what's possible, ready to take charge of our lives and make plans for a future full of plenty and happiness. We can find the keys to success, use the power of our minds, and bring out the hidden potential in all of us if we work together. So I want you to come with me on this life-changing trip as we set out to become millionaires in both money and mind. Now is the time for change, and we have the power to make our lives better. A lot of people start their lives with nothing. To give you an example, in the United States, almost all of the money that is in circulation was made by the first generation. It mostly came from selling professional skills or a heritage that was built through hard work. To make money, you should always look for ways to make what you do more valuable. Choose to give more than you take, add more than you take. Always do more than what is asked of you for the money you get. And always go a little further with your work. Bill once said, no one can prevent you from giving more than you were paid to do. And if you go beyond in everything you do, you will soon be in paradise. Keep in mind that there will never be traffic jams on that extra road. What can you do to make your work better? Follow the three-part rule. First, write down everything you do at work over the course of a week or month. The number of jobs you add could be 10, 20, or 30 in range and difficulty. Second, look over your list and ask yourself, which item on this list would be the most useful to my business or career if I could only do one thing all day? People who work in sales are asked what they could do to double their income the most. Third, once you know what action makes your work the most valuable, ask yourself again, what would be the second thing on my list if I could only do two things all day? Fourth, once you know your two main jobs, ask yourself again, what would be the third thing on my list if I could only do three things all day? Most of the time, the three things you do together will make up 90% or more of the value you bring to your work. What is the rule of three? To be successful, you should focus on three important tasks and spend as much time as possible getting better at each one. Third step, open your own business. These days, about 80% of self-made riches own their own businesses. They started with very little or nothing, but they worked hard to build something. And as business owners, they did very well. Today, you should decide to start your own business. Things will start to happen, even if you're an independent business owner. You create a field of energy when you start your own business that will bring opportunities into your life that will help you run the business. Know this. You need to sell something to start a business. When people first start, they are often shocked by how long it takes to talk to other people to get them to buy their goods or services. A lot of people give up on their projects because they're scared to sell them. What if you're afraid to sell? Think that your fear is just because you don't know how to do it. But that's also true when you're juggling knives or fly. You can reach your financial goals even if you don't have a skill that you could learn. You can learn how to sell well by taking a course, reading a book, or going to a meeting. To start a business, I need to find something I can sell for more than I paid for it. Why is that? In the past, all great fortunes began here. You can learn all the skills you need to run a business, make sales, and find resources. No one learns how to do everything at the start, like make a business plan, analyze the market, write ads, make a budget, figure out costs and prices, and promote the business. But you can learn anything. No one knows everything at first. It takes time for people to learn. You'll be great faster if you learn things quickly. You can use a sales or business skill again and again once you've learned it. British businessman Richard Branson 
was once asked what he thought about this subject. It's pretty much the same. Anyone can start and grow a business once they understand the basic steps. You can then use those steps to start many more businesses. Branson has tried his hand at music, planes, hot air balloons, and building resorts. He follows the same rules over and over, like bear molds. If he does them again and again and succeeds, you can too. Also, remember that each time you use a skill for business or getting resources, you get better at it. You do better work and make fewer mistakes. As I said before, 90% of people who start their own businesses succeed if they have experience. He can do this because he knows how to do it. As startups that have never run a business before end up going out of business. Try to learn as much as you can about business from all the information you can get your hands on. Not just before you start the business, but all the way through your job. Step four, have guts and skills. Right now, the most valuable things are also the ones that will help you start and grow your own business, strength and bravery. Everyone starts out with not much guts or skill, but keep in mind that doing what you're afraid of makes you brave. And using a skill you're not very good at makes you better at it. This is very important for you to understand because a lot of people think it this way. I'll make the call as soon as I feel good enough about myself. I'll do it when I feel brave and strong. No, no. That's not how things work. People must first do the things they are afraid of. That's how brave people get. An awful lot of people think, I'll get to work on it as soon as I feel comfortable calling possible buyers or people we already have. No, though. It gets better over time. At first, you just do things, even if you're not very good at them. Being smart about what you sell and who you sell it to is a key part of being successful in business. Start with the same question we do. Who is your customer when someone knocks on the door? Why should someone buy something? What does he think is important? You should know who your customers are and why they buy from you. What specific perks do you want your customer to get from your service or product? It should be clear to the customer what they will get from your ads and presentations. Lack of clarity is the main reason why sales fail. Because if the potential buyer doesn't fully understand, it makes it harder to close the deal. The buyer says, let me think about it. Which is another way of saying goodbye for good because he isn't sure what he will get out of buying your product or service. What makes the life or work of your customer better with your product or service? Always keep in mind that psychology studies have shown that customers buy based on how they feel after the sale. To put it another way, they want to know what would happen if I bought your product or service. It's important for the customer to clearly picture himself in a better position in the future. After making the purchase, you are giving him something that will make him better off than if he spent his money on something else. I'm going to ask you something. How come people don't buy from you? What is stopping them if it's clear that your service or product is right for them? Why do they say no? What do they think? And why does that make them delay? You could even double your sales and income, build a great business, and become financially free if you could find and fix the problem. In what ways do you compete? What makes your customer want to buy from them from the point of view of your customer? How do they see it? What's better about what the rival has to offer? How could you figure this out? How to make your competitor's edge less strong? What your rival sell can be switched out for something you do better. How is your value offering different from other ones? In this case, I mean something that only you can give a customer that makes them want to pay for it. What gives you an edge over your competitors? What makes your service or product better than those of your competitors? What do you do really well? What makes your service or product better than all the others? All of these questions are important for business growth. You won't be able to make an ad, make a good business presentation, or even find your customers if you don't know what makes your product or service special. When you first start your business, you should spend 80% of your time and energy on sales and getting new customers. Businesses that do well all have one thing in common. They make a lot of money. Things that fail, on the other hand, don't sell much. Start small and test carefully and step by step if you don't have a lot of money at first. Step 5. Pay attention to your cash flow. Grow your business until it makes money and has cash flow. To start the journey, you don't have to risk everything or sell your house and car. You can begin with a small business and little money. And as you go along, you can learn the skills you need. Write down everything you do in great detail. Know where your money goes and where it comes from at all times. A lot of new businesses think they're making a 100% return when they buy something for 50 cents and sell it for $1. They're shocked to find that they are losing money at the end of the month. 
This is because they didn't think about the cost of gas, rent, utilities, food, shipping, their own pay, and other costs. Some business owners don't understand that they can go out of business even with a 100% markup. You should know where your money goes and where it comes from. I think you should make a list. Write down every dollar you earn and spend. All of this is important for the base of your accounts. Get an online accounting system even better and make sure that all of your data is added to it every day. Pay attention to how much money you'll make after taking out all of your costs. Make sure that the work and money you're putting into something is worth it. Look at the cash flow. Good cash flow, which is another name for this number is the most important number in any business. This flow is like blood and air getting to the brain of your business. If the money stops coming in for a while, your business could shut down overnight. Always keep this in mind and pay close attention to it. Don't lose money. That's the first rule of business. A very rich person once said that he had two rules. The first was to never lose money, and the second was to always follow the first rule if he felt like giving up. When you lose money, you also lose the time it took to make it. That's why it's better for your money to stay in the bank and earn interest. That being said, it's not just about the money, it's also about time. The weeks, months, and even years of our lives are also up for grabs. As I wrap up my speech, I want to leave you with one last thought. The path to becoming a millionaire starts with a single step, but it continues with consistent action, unwavering confidence, and unwavering determination. Remember that the path ahead may be hard and full of setbacks and hurdles, but it is also full of chances and rewards for those who are brave enough to follow their dreams. As you leave today, I want you to take with you the fire of inspiration, the spark of possibility, and the determination to go after your goals in a brave and determined way. Make a promise to develop the attitude of a millionaire, one of plenty, optimism, and strength. Accept that failure is a step towards success, that setbacks are chances to learn and grow, and the challenges are tests of your character and determination. Most importantly, never lose sight of your goal. Stay strong in your resolve and settle for anything less than the amazing life you were meant to live. For within you lies the power to build the life of your dreams, to achieve financial independence, and to leave a legacy that will endure for generations to come. So go forth, my friends, and take the day. Transform your attitude, unleash your potential, and claim the abundant life that awaits you. And remember, the journey to becoming a millionaire starts not with the size of your bank account, but with the richness of your thoughts, the depth of your beliefs, and the strength of your actions. Dare to dream, dare to hope, and dare to become the millionaire you were always meant to be. Lucky people don't just get lucky in life. Ladies and gentlemen, on this trip, which we can all start and shape, there is a journey. Today, I'd like to take you on a trip through the business secrets of the world's richest people. Take a moment to picture ourselves in front of a large painting. In this mural, the world's richest people are interacting with each other and sharing their stories and secrets. They're not superheroes and don't have superpowers, but these people do have something special that we can learn from and use in our own lives. Let's take a moment to think about ourselves before we look at that painting. Let's ask ourselves, what do I want out of life? How am I going to get it? Success doesn't come from daydreaming. It comes from being patient, persistent, and always learning. We're now going to enter the world of the successful and look into the secrets they've been keeping for a long time. Each of these secrets opens a new door, giving us a chance to grow and thrive. Come with me as we learn the secrets to success. I promise that when you leave this room, you'll have memories and a strong desire to make a difference in your life and the lives of those around you. Success is like a river that never stops. You can only find it by following the steps of those who have been here before you. My friend, I want to take you on an epic trip to the top of the tallest mountain. Success is like a mountain. It stands tall and mysterious, but the golden light at its peak opens up a world of options. Have you ever thought about how some people reach the top of that mountain while others stay stuck in the fog of average? What hidden treasures and secrets does this, this mountain hide that only a few brave people can find? Today I'm going to reveal the secrets of that peak, the secrets of those who have reached the top and changed the course of history forever. 
However, before I tell you these secrets, I want to encourage you to consider the idea that you all have the power to climb that peak and achieve the success you desire. Are you ready to start? Do you want to be successful? Are you ready to keep an open mind? Follow your interest and let inspiration lead you? If the answer is a strong yes, I promise you that this journey will change you. Get ready, because we're going to look into the keys to success and learn how to use them ourselves. Allow us to begin. The best way to predict the future is to create it, reads a beautiful line I just read. This means having a vision. Whether your dream is in the sky or the air, you need to build a base for it. Men and women who rise from poverty and darkness to fame and honor are always people who have a vision of what they could be, have, and do much better than what they are. Everyone has had a time when they were young and wished they could grow up and have their own cars. As we grew up, we dreamed of having our own houses and families. We also have the chance to travel and see Europe as we get older. We made all of our dreams come true. It's great that we usually manage to reach our goals. What's wrong is that we have too few goals. We don't get excited or enthusiastic about them, even when we reach them. Instead of focusing on the things you need to do, picture big goals. That's the important thing. Make sure you know exactly what you want to happen. One of the keys to peak success is to do this. People who work at their best are focused on getting results. Losers and their artists tend to be interested in doing things. They put in a lot of work on task orientation. There are times when they work very hard and longer than you, but they lose sight of the end goal. They understand why the strategic thinker said it was the worst thing in the world to do something very well that didn't need to be done at all. A lot of us work very hard to do very quickly things that don't need to be done at all. What results do you expect from me at work? This is a key question. What kinds of things? But what results am I meant to get at work? Why am I on the payroll? Is another important question you can ask yourself. What are you expecting from me now that I'm on the payroll? It is assumed that we will make sales and we're only working when we are doing something that directly helps us reach that goal. Isn't that true? Of course, then why do we do the other things? I'm sure that we do other things because they are fun and easy, not because they are hard and need to be done. If I may say something that wasn't part of the discussion, I think the main reason people fail in life is because it's too easy. We always get what we want in the fastest and easiest way possible. The fastest and easiest way to get somewhere in life is almost always the way to fail. It's short-term relief for long-term pain. It's not what it should be, but what it is for fun and ease today. Finally, near the end of our lives, when it's past due, we have to do what is tough and important. To be successful, you must be willing and able to set clear goals, know exactly what you want, where you're going, and what results are expected of you, and then focus only on those results. Individuals can't be successful if they can't control their desire to do what is hard and important instead of what is enjoyable and simple. Always keep the end result in mind, not the activities. This is especially important when planning your daily tasks and handling your time. Here's a way that has worked for me. Jot down your plans. Make a list of all your goals. By the way, all goals need to be written down. If you don't write down your goals, they're just dreams. As the saying goes, a dream is just a goal that doesn't have any power behind it. Write down your goals, making sure they are clear and detailed. Then, every morning, Rewrite your main goals in the first person, as if they already exist. Every morning, write down your main goals again. You should be able to finish this in two to four minutes, or even five. It only needs one line. Suppose your goal is to make $50,000 a year. Every morning, write, I earn $50,000 a year. If your goal is to be the best real estate agent, write, I am an excellent seller in my field. If your goal is to lose weight or have a certain kind of life, Write your main goals in the first person, as if they already exist. Then, every night, do something else for 5 to 10 minutes instead of watching TV. Say, wait a minute, I need to review my progress right before you turn it on. Then, look back over what you've done and ask yourself, what did I do well today? What did I do right that brought me closer to my goals? The second question is, what would I do differently if I could live today over again? By the way, those are the four steps. Write down and rewrite your goals every morning. Look them over at night and ask yourself, what did I do well? What did I do today that helped me reach my goals? Why would I do something different if I could live that day over? 
Over the next 30 days, ask yourself those two questions. It will help you get more done than in the last six months. I've never seen a better way to do this. It's something I learned a while back. Just write down your goals again every morning. Make it clear. We don't set enough goals or goals that are high enough. You can have anything you want. Imagine that you can have anything you want. As long as you can remember it all the time. If you're sure you want something and are ready to pay for it, you can get it. Being clear is important. Make sure you know what you want. Make it clear what you need to do to get it. Be sure of what you want. Be clear when you walk, talk, and act. That's all there is to say about the truth. A lot of people get into trouble by being vague or if you prefer by being very careful about what they say. People have already eaten lunch by the time they finally say it. And being clear and straight is a key part of being successful. For the record, for an interesting study they did last year, they asked a lot of women executives, like, if you had to tell someone something bad about their career that was going to affect their lives and you've known this for a long time, how would you go about telling them? Each person then explained what they would do. They would pick the right time, start by talking about things they both had in common, shut the door, and block out any other noise. Anyway, they kept going back and forth, each trying to find a roundabout way to get to the point. Then they asked, how would you like to be informed about this same issue? And, and each of them replied, I would like to be informed directly. I would like someone to tell me the news clearly. Because we know we can handle anything, we all want to be treated fairly. But we think everyone else is too weak to handle it. We move slowly and we don't tell them the news because of this. Also, telling them the news can sometimes make things worse than they need to be. To sum up, be direct, use clear words, and be clear in what you do. Make sure people know where you stand, what you've said, and what you mean. This is very, very important, and you need to practice it. Also, you have to practice all of these habits and traits in order to get better at them. I thought about the idea of greatness for a while and saw something I hadn't seen before, like something had come to the surface of my mind. I noticed that, that every successful person I had studied had made a promise to be the best at what they did. After making up my mind to be the best at that thing, I started to look around, compare, and talk to people. Almost every month, I talked to tens of thousands of people. It was rare to find a wealthy person who wasn't great at what they did. Being competent and determined to get better at what you're doing are two things that you must have in order to be successful. People today are very competitive, so if you're not good at what you do, you won't get far. Unless you win the prize, if you work hard to be the best, you will be successful. You have a lot of other things on your mind, but if you decide to be the best, it will change everything about you. Five or ten percent of the people are the best. Some salespeople make eighty percent of the sales, and the worst businesses make only 20% of the sales. This is known as the 80 20 rule, or the Pareto Principle. What's the difference? In this case, the change is the link between 16 and 1. 80% of people in the bottom 20% make 16 times as much as the first 20%. What does it mean that the top 20 are 16 times better than the bottom 80%? They worked 16 times as many hours and went to school 16 times as many years. Are they 16 times more handsome? Are they 16 times anything else? No, but the top 20% of these people make 16 times what the rest of them do. A few years ago, the Prudential Company did a study in which they compared the wages of the thousands of agents they had across the United States. The 80-20 rule told them that 80% of their business was being done by 20% of their agents. That's right, they had everything on the computer. What is the average income of the top 20% compared to the 80%? They asked again. That means that the top 4% of people are mathematicians. How much did they find the average income to be? What they found was that the top 4% made 32 times as much as the bottom 80%. They thought it was cool, so they ran it again. They found that the top 0.8% of earners were the top 20% of the top 20% made an average of 54 times as much as the average earner in the bottom 80%. As a result, they discovered that in every state and big city where they had an office with many agents, there was one agent who was selling the same product to the same people at the same price as everyone else. This agent was making 50 times as much as the average adult, even though the economy was bad. 
One guy in the office was making more than all 50 of the others put together. Isn't that amazing? They found that one of the keys to this was that each of these managers had promised themselves at the start of their careers to be the best. I'll get into this and make a living, they said. I'll get into this and be the best. You have to commit to excellence and become the best. And the great thing is that excellence is a journey, not a goal. You never get there. If you want to be excellent, you need to avoid complacency and happiness. But if you decide to be excellent, everything will be possible for you. One very important thing about being excellent is that you should always do your best and try to do even better. You should remember that the last 5 to 10% of a job or project is usually what makes it worthwhile. But when we get to 90%, we start to drag our feet, put off the papers, make excuses, and do what's fun and easy instead of what's hard and necessary. And the only way to enjoy something is to do it well. You see, when we do something well, we feel good about ourselves and proud. We feel like winners. Things don't give us anything. They give us nothing. Uh, what you'll notice is that they don't reward us if we do okay work. They don't give us anything. When we do something really well, though, it makes us feel great about ourselves. You don't have to be very different from someone else. You only need to be a little different in the important ways that matter. To do that, all you have to do is set a goal and work toward it. You can change into anything you want. As our investigation into the secrets that make billionaires rich comes to a close, it's important to take the important lessons we've learned to heart. Rich people have a lot of flash and glit, but they also have a tapestry of strength, discipline, and unwavering dedication. Every story we've looked into and every principle we've broken down shows how strong the human spirit is and how much it can accomplish. But let's not just be amazed by what other people have done. Let's use their success as a stepping stone to reach our own goals. They have been successful because they have left us with a plan or roadmap for how to reach greatness ourselves. While the trip is difficult, it also holds the promise of immense growth and happiness for those brave enough to take it. Don't forget this as you leave this gathering. You are the creator of your fate, the master of your fate. Armed with the knowledge you've gained from today's discussion, go forth with unshakable determination, knowing that every problem is actually a chance to learn and grow. Let the stories of these business giants not only inspire, but also move people to take action. In hard times, let their strength be your compass. And in your quest for your dreams, let their unwavering commitment to greatness be your guide. Leaving with hearts full of hope and minds, full of possibilities, let us know that the path to success is not a destination, but a trip that lasts a lifetime and is full of promise and potential. Thank you, dear friends, for coming to this event. May all of your efforts be a huge success, and may you leave your mark on the pages of history. Everything you are or ever will be is up to you. You are the master of your own fate, the architect of your own destiny. You are self-made, completely responsible for the quality of your life and for your results. The principle of self-development is one of the vital keys to the psychology of success. Self-development requires self-discipline, hard work, and persistence. It builds character, ability, and self-esteem. The more you work on yourself, the more you like and respect and believe in yourself. The more self-confidence you have, the greater the feeling of personal fulfillment you experience. Men and women who accomplish great things with their lives are not necessarily better or smarter or more gifted than others. They are usually just individuals who have made the efforts necessary to develop their potentials to a greater degree than the ordinary. The wonderful thing about our free society is that you can become just about anything you really want if you are willing to pay the price in terms of hard work on yourself. There's no limit to how far you can go except for the limits you place on yourself. I once read a quote from Abraham Lincoln that had a profound effect on my life. It was written in his diary as a young man in Springfield. It said, I will study and prepare myself, and someday my chance will come. If you study and prepare yourself, your chance will come too. You will meet people unexpectedly who will enable you to utilize your knowledge. You will get phone calls and letters in the mail. You will come across articles and advertisements that lead you to use your skills and abilities. One of the most important of the mental laws is the law of correspondence, which says, as within, so without. Your outer circumstances in every area will correspond with your inner world. 
Your material and financial world will reflect the quality and quantity of preparation you have engaged in. Every effort, small or large, accumulates and grows like a snowball rolling down a hill. Every act of delayed gratification, discipline, and self-development counts for something. Every extraordinary accomplishment is preceded by thousands of hours of ordinary preparation. Just as a spring becomes a trickle, a trickle becomes a brook, brooks create streams, and finally, many streams create an enormous river that flows inexorably, unstoppably, carrying everything before it to the sea. So it is with self-development. Every achievement that is recognized and applauded is preceded by countless small efforts, failures, disappointments, and setbacks that no one ever sees. You can learn whatever you need to be successful. There is more information available today can help you be more effective than ever before. The smartest and most successful men and women who ever lived have poured the best of everything they know into books, tapes, seminars, and video cassettes. Some of the most valuable information on succeeding in any field is available to you in exchange for a few dollars and some hard, hard work. Would you like to double your income? How about increasing your income 10 times, a thousand percent? Would you like that? If I can show you a simple formula that is virtually guaranteed to work, to double, triple, quadruple your income, would you try it? Most people will say yes, but only about 1 in 20, according to my experience, will actually do it. Here it is, a simple formula. But first, a simple question, do you believe it is possible for you to increase your effectiveness and improve your productivity by 2% over the next month, the next 30 days? Let me put it this way, could you do it if your life depended on it? Of course, you could. One or two small changes in your daily routine, a little bit better time management, a little bit more effectiveness in your key result areas could give you a 2% improvement. Now, having done it the first month, could you do it again the second month? 2% more. How about the third month? Could you, by working steadily on yourself a little bit each day, managing your time a little better, improving your overall productivity, increase your performance and your effectiveness by 2% in the third month? Of course, you could. Almost anyone could if they cared enough to apply themselves. You get onto a learning curve. Well, 2% per month compounded translates into 26% per year. 26% per year productivity improvement through personal development, skill enhancement, and additional training is a reasonable, believable, even modest but surely attainable goal. 26% per year compounded will equal 100% improvement in 3 years, 1000% improvement in 10 years. This simple 2% formula can be the most important success formula you ever learn. Now, here's how it works. You first determine your aim. Do you really want to achieve great financial success in your work? Do you want it badly enough to pay the price in terms of preparation? Assuming the answer is yes, here's what you do. First of all, you stop or dramatically cut back on all those activities that do not contribute anything to your life. Then become an avid reader. Reading is to the mind as exercise is to the body. Reading is vital to your success. Not only does it require total concentration, but you learn things by reading that you cannot learn any other way. There is no substitute for it. In fact, if you read just one book per month to develop or improve yourself in some way, it will put you in the top 1% in terms of personal development. If you read one book per week, which you can do if you read one hour per day, that will translate into 52 books per year, 520 books over 10 years. If you read 520 books to improve yourself and enhance your effectiveness at work in a world where the average person reads less than one book per year, do you think it might give you the edge? A critical winning edge that makes all the difference between success and failure? You bet it would. One book per week would so change the course of your life in a positive way that you would be astonished, and it won't take 10 years. You'll begin to see significant changes in the quality of your life and your results within months, sometimes within weeks, sometimes within days. Well, you begin by getting up each morning two hours before your first appointment or before you have to be at work, earlier if necessary. Then, before you leave the house, rewrite your major goals and a brief description of your goals for the day, just a few lines. It takes you a couple of minutes to rewrite those goals and impress them into your mind. This exercise activates your subconscious and gives you a sense of purpose and focus for the hours ahead. Next, and this is very important, listen to educational audio cassettes during traveling time in your car, and if you use public transportation or if you're flying. The average car owner drives 12,000 to 25,000 miles per year, which is as many as 500 to 1,000 hours per year in the car. This translates into 12.5 to 25 40 hour weeks sitting in the car, enjoying prime learning time. This is the equivalent of one to two university semesters. You can become one of the best educated, most highly motivated, well-informed people of our society simply by listening to audio cassettes in your car.
If you're not listening to audio cassettes in your car continually, you're missing hundreds of hours of prime learning time, and every hour you miss is going to cost you in lost earnings and diminished potential. The third leg of the triangle of self-development, the first two being reading and listening to audio cassettes, is courses and seminars put on by people who have achieved success in the subjects they're talking about, and this is important. Attend at least four seminars or courses per year, one every three months. Take all the training you can get, and never stop learning. If your company supplies you with training opportunities, take every single one of them. And if your company does not, remember you are totally 100% responsible for your ongoing education. The whole purpose of an education, even up to university level, is simply to teach you how to learn. From then on, it's up to you to apply the lesson. I think that the major difference between winners and losers is their attitude towards spending money on improving themselves. Winners recognize that they are their most precious asset. Winners are always investing in improving the quality of their thinking and the quality of their knowledge. They recognize that the functioning of their mind, more than anything else, is going to determine everything that happens to them. And they're always working on achieving a higher level of mental fitness and mental preparedness. Remember, they say that luck is when preparedness meets opportunity. Winners in almost every field are characterized by the fact that they know more, that they have more practical knowledge acquired through study and experience than do the underachievers. It's as simple as that. Losers always make excuses for not investing in themselves. You've probably all heard the things they say. They say things like, I can't afford it, which means, of course, that they won't afford it. They usually have money for clothes, money for socializing, money for liquor, and money for travel, but they don't have money to invest in their minds. They say, I don't have the time, which means, of course, that they won't make the time to invest in themselves. And the worst of all, they say, I don't need it because I know all that stuff already. Most losers fall into the category of what they call the unconscious incompetent. This is the person who does not know and does not know that he does not know. The truly hopeless case. People with limited education are aware of how little they know relative to how much there is to learn, so they're continually seeking new information. But university graduates often think they've learned everything there is to know, and they stop reading when they leave campus. The bottom line of the losing mentality is that the loser does not believe in himself or herself. The loser doesn't believe that any efforts in self-development would change anything, so they don't even try. Remember, a person who does not read is no better than a person who cannot read. A person who does not work on himself or herself is no better than a person who cannot. Ignorance is one of the greatest enemies of mankind, and today in our wide open society, ignorance is self-inflicted and inexcusable. Here are seven final thoughts on personal development. Number one, begin right now today to become a perpetual learning machine. Read, study, listen to tapes, take courses continually. One hour per day of study in any subject will make you an authority in three years, a national expert in five, and an international authority in seven. Number two, remain teachable, remain open, interested, and curious. In all your life, you will never learn all there is to know about even one subject, even about yourself, for instance. Number three, if you want to be successful, study success. Become an expert on success. Learn proven success methods from others so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Number four, get around other successful people. Fly with eagles, don't scratch with turkeys. Learn from them. Ask their advice on what to do, what to read, what courses to take, what takes to listen to, and be willing to help others with advice on success as you learn it. Number five, the human being is an organism, and if you're not growing with the input of new information and ideas, you're stagnating. Most people are stuck in a rut because they stopped growing. Don't let this happen to you. When you stop taking in new information, your mind and your brain begin to atrophy, and you tend to fall into a state of lethargy and depression. It is new information that gets you out of it. Number six, as Jim Rohn says in the audio cassette program, Seven Secrets of Wealth and Happiness, work at least as hard on yourself as you do on your job. Work at least as hard on yourself as you do in your job. Remember, you're your most valuable asset. And finally, number seven, the self-respect and self-confidence that comes as a result of learning and growing toward the fulfillment of your potential is the root source of self-esteem and self-worth. To all the men and women, take a moment to picture a life where your income and goals are not only possible but also a thousand times better than you ever imagined. As a speaker, I'm not the only person in front of you today.
I'm also a messenger of hope filled with strategies and ideas that can help you reach success levels you never thought possible. It's been way too long since we broke free from the chains of mediocrity and chose to live instead of thrive. To my friends though, today is the start of a new journey toward financial success and personal happiness. Let's let go of the chains of doubt and fear as we start this journey together and instead focus on the endless possibilities that lie ahead of us because deep down inside our minds is the power to make our deepest wishes and hopes come true. We can open the vault of wealth that lies within us by making sure that our thoughts, beliefs and deeds are all in sync. But let's not be scared off by how big the job is. Instead, let's break it up into steps that we can handle, each one getting us closer to our end goal. With unshakable resolve and determination, let us move closer to our goals every day, knowing that every small victory brings us one step closer to the life of our dreams. As we learn the strategies and techniques that will help us reach new levels of success, let us do so with open minds and hearts, knowing that we all have the power to change our lives. Let's start this path of self-discovery and empowerment together, sure that we can reach greatness and open the doors to a future full of wealth and abundance. Imagine knowing every morning that your goals and income are about to go through the roof. I'm going to tell you how to grow your business by 1000%. Let me take you on a trip where everything is possible. There's no doubt that many of us have trouble reaching our goals and making more money. We tend to get stuck in habit and comfort, which limits what we can do. Things are going to change soon though. A growth attitude is the first thing that you need to do to be successful. Focus on chances instead of problems. Wait until the end of the movie to hear about John. He went from being an employee to a billionaire by changing the way he thought about things and using what I'm about to teach you. Now let's begin. Today I'm going to show you how to make your income, performance, and productivity go up by 1000% and then go up by 10 in the years to come. This method is built on the law of progressive improvement which says that people get better over time. I call it the 1000% formula. Not everyone goes from being normal or mediocre to amazing all of a sudden. Keep in mind that it takes between 5 and 7 years to learn your craft, become the best at what you do, and be in the top 10%. You should start soon. The law of accumulation is another idea that the 1000% formula is based on. This law says that success comes from a lot of small efforts and sacrifices that no one notices or values. In a beautiful poem, Henry Wadsworth said, Extraordinary men and women who reached and mastered the high peaks did not achieve it with a sudden fly. While their companions slept, they struggled in their night ascent. This means that while most people watch TV, hang out with friends and have fun, those who will be extraordinary in the future are working hard and learning new things. Little by little, they get better. The simple key to success is to get a little better every day. This is called continuous and permanent growth. Now I want to ask you a question. Could you make 0.1% more progress in your work, performance and success in just one day? You could get to work a little earlier, work a little harder, stay in the office a little later, and focus on your most important tasks to get a thousand times more done in one day. What do you think happens when I ask this question in a lecture? Yes, that can be done in 30 seconds. Each one says the second. They could do it again the next day if they did it the first time. They say, yes, of course. What about days three, four, and five? Of course. Could they do it all week? They might be able to get 0.5% more done the following week. If 0.1% for five days leads to 0.5% the following week, the people in the crowd would have answered if they really wanted to. Sure, if they got more done the first week, they could do it again, right? Adding, of course, at this point, an interesting thing called the momentum principle starts to happen. The flow of the situation pulls one along, like going to the gym every day. We already know that it gets easier each day, and that if you do it every day for a week, you can do it every day for the next three weeks. In one month, this adds up to 2%. People say, yes, you could keep getting better in the second, third, and fourth months. Yes, you could do it all year long. There are 52 weeks in a year, since there are 12 months with four weeks each. In a year, if you get better by 2% every month, you'll have gained 24%. You could be 24% more productive in a year if you worked on yourself, organized your time better, and focused on important tasks. Do you believe this? 
Of course, the answer is yes. You could get twice as much done in a month if you really wanted to. I think about uh, 24% a year is a fair amount. I did that for a year. Then it was easy for me to do it the next year, the third, and the fourth. Yes, your income will go up by the same amount if you improve your performance, results, and output by 24% per year. In the same way, in three years, you will double your income efficiency and productivity. All of your efficiency, performance, results, and income would have gone up by 140% if you added up the results of the last 10 years. Strangest of all, if you improve yourself by 0.05% every day, 0.5% for five days, 2% every month, and 24% every year, you'll be 10 times better and make more money in 10 years. A young friend named Chris came up to me at a seminar in Seattle. He said, it's been seven years since I took your seminar. I've been practicing your 100% formula every day, and it doesn't work. I asked, what do you mean? Well, I've been getting up early every day and also doing several of the things you recommended, but your formula doesn't work. My income didn't increase tenfold in 10 years, he said. I asked again, shocked. Then I saw him smile in a naughty way. In just seven years, I made 10 times as much money as I did when I first met you. Your formula is the most amazing thing in the world. It changed my life and made it possible for me to give my family a great life. We now live in a beautiful house and my kids go to private schools. It's truly wonderful. Here are the seven steps that make up the 1,000% formula. First, every morning, get up two hours before your first appointment or office time and read something educational, motivational, or inspiring for 30 to 60 minutes. You should read something that makes you better at the job you already have. As I said before, you can finish a book in a week if you read through 30 minutes to an hour, 50 books in a year if you read one every week. It takes 10 years to read all of 50 books. To store them, you'll at least need a bigger house. Now, in the next 10 years, you could make a thousand times more money if you only read for an hour a day and focused on work-related books. Second, write down and go over your main goals again every morning before you start the day. I think you should use a spiral notebook. Write the date and your 10 goals for that day at the top of the page. This will help you change them in your subconscious, bring out your superconscious abilities, and start the day with a very clear idea of what you want to accomplish. In the next 10 years, you can make 10 times as much money by rewriting and reviewing your key goals every morning. Third, plan ahead for each day. Write down your plans the night before. I'm adamant that you could boost your performance, results, and, and productivity by 25% just by planning each day. You'll start getting more done the first day you do this. In 10 years, your income will be 10 times what it is now. Fourth, make a list of your chores and decide which ones are most important. This will help you make the most of your time. This is the most important thing you can do to be successful. Pick out the most important thing you can do and spend the whole day doing it. This will change your life in ways you've never experienced before. And in 10 years, it will make you 10 times as much money. Chef, use your car to listen to radio shows. Around the world, I always meet people who started listening to this kind of radio show and became hooked on it. They watch shows about Setting goals, managing time, relationships, sales, business, and making money. This did change them as people. Which is true because when you listen to audio programs, your subconscious stores the knowledge. People tell me over and over, I didn't know what to do in that situation, but then I remembered a phrase from an audio program. I repeated it or did what it said and it worked. You never know where a great idea will come from. That's why you need to understand a lot. I met a young man in San Luis not long ago who said he wasn't good at reading, but good at listening. Sadly, he did not have enough money to buy all six episodes of my shows, but he ran home for lunch. He asked his mom for the money. He bought the record when he got back. His family lived with him at the time, and he had almost no money. He also drove an old car. He told me, in four years, I've made over $500,000. People sometimes ask me, okay, but what if it doesn't work? What if it does? Can you afford not to try? The answer is, what did I do well? This is the first question you should ask yourself after every experience. For example, after a sales call or presentation, summarize what you did well and ask yourself what you did well. When I made a mistake, I used to sit down with a notebook and pen and write down everything I did right. The second question is, if I had to do this again, what would I do differently? Write down all the ways you could improve your performance. It's interesting that both questions have positive answers. Many people used to think that they had to immediately break down and ask themselves what went wrong. 
But think about this. Anything you think about, imagine, discuss, and remember will be reprogrammed into your subconscious. If you focus on reviewing your mistakes, they will make you more likely to make mistakes in similar situations in the future. On the other hand, if you focus on remembering what you did well and what you could do differently next time, you'll program your subconscious and make yourself more likely to do things well in the future. 7. Treat everyone you meet as if they were a million dollar customer. Start with your family and work your way outward. Remember that everyone thinks they're the most important person in the world. If you treat others as if they could buy a million dollars worth of your products or services, they will treat you with the same warmth, affection, and respect. Soon you'll find that the highest paid people in all fields are the ones who are liked by their customers and buyers because they treat them as very special and important. So as promised, let me take you on a journey that will inspire you and show you how the 1000% formula changed the life of someone who took the leap and believed in the power of constant growth. Meet John, the main character of a story that will show you that human potential is truly limitless. I had dreams, aspirations, and a vision of a better future just like you and me. But unlike many, John decided that he didn't want those dreams to be just that, dreams. He set out on a journey of self-discovery and overcoming that would lead him to push his limits and rise beyond what he thought was possible. John used the 1000% formula as his compass. John's journey is a hymn to transformation through the 1000% formula. Let's dive into the story of John, a young man whose dreams and vision of a tomorrow full of possibilities. His desire to be more productive, perform better and make more money shone like stars in the sky. But he didn't want those desires to be mere shooting stars. He decided to turn them into bright constellations in the sky of his life. This journey, which he called the 100% formula, is an anthem to personal triumph and inspired transformation. John knew that big changes don't happen overnight, but through the patient mastery of each day. Like an alchemist of constant improvement, he embraced the law of progressive improvement. Knowing that, like a dedicated sculptor, he would carve his excellence slowly. He chose to walk in the direction of perpetual growth, a path of consistency and passion driven by the law of accumulation. John made small efforts which were his allies, and each step, each choice became a step that would take him to new height. John let the little things he did each day shape his future in the same way that soft water shapes rocks over time. He started using the formula in his daily life right away. Every morning, while everyone else was still sleeping, John, still energized from the night before, spent two hours reading books that were like growth seeds in his garden of knowledge. With every word, he was building stronger foundations for his future and cultivating a mindset that was rich in constant learning. Every day, John rewrote his main goals like an artist painting clear strokes on a canvas of his life. Each stroke reinforced his purpose and each word gave his goals new life. This daily ritual not only confirmed his dreams, but it also kept him focused on his desired future. Planning ahead became his daily compass. In the evening, as the sun went down, John planned his next day. He set priorities and a constellation of tasks in the vast sky of possibilities, weaving his day with the precision of a weaver, making patterns of efficiency and focus. When faced with problems and choices, John learned to ask himself two magical questions. What did I do well? And what would I do differently? These questions became beacons of his continuous improvement. Instead of lamenting in the darkness of mistakes, he lit his path forward with the glow of constructive self-exploration. The power of constant learning came in the form of a symphony of voices in his car. Each commute became a chance to soak up information, like a river waters the land it touches. John worked on the soil of his mind, turning his time into a harvest of wisdom. But the most important thing that changed him was how he treated others. Every meeting, every smile was an opportunity. John saw unlimited potential in everyone, as if each person were a shining gem representing a huge treasure. He treated everyone with the respect and attention that a million dollar treasure would deserve. Seven years later, John was at the peak of his own success. His productivity, performance, and income, which had seemed like faraway stars at first, were now lined up in his sky of accomplishments. He shared his journey with others, showing that the 1000% formula is not just a formula, but a symphony of constant effort and determination. John's story is a dance of overcoming, a message that every day is a blank canvas 
on which to paint our growth. The seeds we plant today will bloom into a tomorrow full of unexplored possibilities. If you want to change things, every little thing you do or decision you make has the power to do so. Don's journey shows us this and encourages us all to find our own way to greatness. To end, I want to share a quote from a visionary. The only thing that will stop us from realizing tomorrow is our doubts of today. Don't let doubt stop you. Trust yourself, your abilities, and the strategies we've talked about today. You are on the way to amazing growth. As we say goodbye to each other, let's think about the journey we've been on and the lessons we've learned along the way. The strategies and techniques we've looked at, they have the power to change not only our financial situations, but also the course of our lives. As you leave this meeting, remember that the path to success is not a destination, but an ongoing journey of growth and self-discovery. See the challenges that lie ahead as chances to grow and use them to fuel your unwavering drive for excellence. Know that with each step you take, you're getting closer to realizing your dreams and aspirations. But remember, friends, that success isn't just about getting rich or famous, but also about making a difference in the world around you. Do what you want with courage and conviction, knowing that, that you have the power to change your fate and make the life you really want. Let the lessons you've learned today guide you as you work toward your goals and may your journey be filled with plenty, happiness, and fulfillment. Thank you for letting me share this life-changing experience with you. May you continue to strive for greatness in everything you do and may your future be filled with wealth and success beyond measure.